Hello, everyone. I'm Eva Myers, and I'm the co-founder and co-lead of the Angel Shark Project. And today, for the International Angel Shark Day, I will be um, giving you a very short presentation and insight into how we are catching angels in the Canary Islands. So back in 2014, when we started working in the Canaries, um, the Canary Islands were identified as the stronghold for this um, critically endangered shark. Our research um, started by learning and understanding where these sharks were distributed along the islands and whether or not there were certain hotspots or key areas for them. So divers and fishers have been observing them um, in greater numbers during certain seasons. And here in this map, um, which is from a paper that we published in 2017, you can show in the bigger circles those areas where you had the highest frequencies of sightings reported to us or observed. So we thought that these areas must be critical areas for angel sharks, where um, we started focusing our dedicated research. Some of these critical areas are so-called mating areas. Observations showed that um, adult angel sharks, large females and large males, come close to shore during certain periods of the year um, to mate in um, these areas. Other areas um, that we consider critical areas are so-called nursery areas, um, where juvenile angel sharks have been observed. Um, but for an area to actually be considered a proper nursery area, there are three criteria that need to be fulfilled. The first criteria is that juvenile angel sharks are more commonly encountered in this area than in other areas. Um, individual angel sharks have a tendency to remain or to return to these areas for extended periods. And the third criteria is that there are um, the area or habitat is repeatedly used uh, across years by juvenile angel sharks. So we started um, to look into these nurseries and what would actually make such a nursery area? Which are these areas where we are finding baby sharks? Um, and in fact, it's areas where um, baby, in this case, the juvenile angel sharks go to forage, to feed, um, to find shelter, to um, bury in the sand, um, since they're ambush predators, and to um, surprise their prey, as you can see in this video. Um, mostly during nighttime, which is when they're most active. And they have this amazing capability of remaining unseen in the sand um, and have the surprise moment. So we had a cl closer look at uh, nursery areas and how many sharks were actually being reported to us. And as you can see in this graph, um, the thick black line is showing the number of sightings um, and the depth where they were sighted of um, newborn angel sharks and the dotted line of juvenile angel sharks. And it's pretty clear that they only have been mostly occurring in the first 20 meters. So there's a clear preference towards the shallow areas and that goes um, even to less than a meter where you can find these baby sharks super shallow in coastal um, and protected areas. One of these areas that fulfills these requirements, lots of sand, shallow, coastal and protected, is um, Las Teresitas Beach. Uh, this is a beach which is located in the north of Tenerife Island and uh, is considered today the largest uh, nursery area for um, angel sharks. Las Teresitas Beach is not only very popular with baby sharks, but also um, a lot of beach users uh, go there every day. It's the city beach, uh, very close to the capital of Tenerife. And so it's very, very, very crowded and very famous. It's uh, not a secret that angel sharks are present there. And in fact, um, these signs are all over the beach and it's a very interesting um, natural laboratory of coexistence between humans and sharks. Sometimes though, this coexistence doesn't necessarily go that well. 
but there is an increased interest and awareness of people there um, to go and see the baby sharks, which during the day actually hide quite well um, away from the tourists in two deeper areas. Felicitas Beach is also considered um, a special area of conservation, which means that there are dedicated um, protection measures uh, in place for this area, such as no fishing, um, no boats, well, except for certain areas. Um, and interestingly, before um, the Desitas looked very different. It was a volcanic black sand beach, very exposed to waves. And um, in order to have to attract more tourists and to have a city beach, sand from the Sahara Desert was brought there, was filled up, the breakwaters were added, a very sheltered and protected space was created away from large predators and with a possibility for a lot of juvenile fish to thrive, including angel sharks. So what, what do we want to know about this place? We wanted to understand if um, for how long juvenile angel sharks actually stay here. How many are there? Where are they? When do they come? Um, how fast do juvenile angel sharks grow? And also, how many females um, do actually come here to this beach to give, um, to give birth? And we also wanted to understand more about the um, parentage and the related and the reproductive behavior of angel sharks. And finally, also, um, if females return to the same places every year, and if the juveniles, once they're gone and become adults, also return to the same area. These are some of the questions, and obviously there is a huge catalog of questions that started arising once the project has started. But in order to answer our questions, we set up a tagging program, a long-term tagging program since 2014, where we would uh, three to four times a year survey the speech in three nights in a row and collect and tag um, angel sharks. Of course, this is work that requires a huge teamwork effort. And uh, we've had not only the Angel Shark Project team working on this, but also a number of volunteers um, that have taken the opportunity to join us during the campaigns to support us because it's so accessible and easy um, to find angel sharks without having to dive or go into complicated places to see them. We've had school teachers and school children, biologists, a lot of people joining our campaigns. And we normally, um, during these campaigns, divide the teams into one tagging team, which works on land, and one water team, which goes into the water searching for and catching angels. So how do we catch angels? That was the uh, main focus of this presentation. Um, the team in the water goes out at night with torches. The reason why we use torches is one, we have to see something, but two, once we spot um, angel sharks, the light um, of their eyes, the light that reflects from their eyes makes it very, very easy to find them. As you can see, it's not very easy to, to find and spot a buried shark. So the team runs a transect um, at night, because that's when they're most active, in search for angels. Once an angel is found, it's spotted with a torch. And another member of the team comes with a net, which is meant to be shown here, and catches the shark. We then take the shark in this net um, to, to the shore, and it's then transported in a tray full of water to the tagging table, which is very close as well in the sand next to the beach, where the workup um, is done. So what's the workup? What do we actually do with them once we've caught them? We take measurements, we the length, the weight, and a few other measurements. We then uh, tag the shark. Um, here in the first seat, they get pit tagged, which is a little microchip, which uh, is commonly used also for dogs or for cats, and that can be read with a scanner that we pass over it. 
And in some other features, um, we've also used T-bar tags, which are these little spaghetti tags that have a color and a code. So it's also visually recognizable. We then take a thin clip, um, a tiny, tiny, small sample um, that we use for our genetic analysis. And obviously we look whether it's a female or a male shark that we caught. After we've done the workup, we release the shark safely back into the place where we caught them initially and they can swim away and continue feeding. And so far, um, I will give you a little glimpse of our results. Uh, we saw that uh, angel sharks are born at a size of 20 to 25 centimeters. Um, <clears throat> from overall, but this is not including the data from this year, we've tagged 424 uh, juvenile angel sharks here, and we've taken genetic sample of um, most of them over the past five years. And we have already recaptured at least 87 juvenile sharks here. So um, this is um, the information, these recaptures are giving us the information on the growth rate, how much, have, how much weight have they gained since we tagged and released them, how much have they grown, and also very interestingly, how long did they stay in Las Teresitas and have used this area as a nursery area? And our data show that they uh, remained up to 15 months, so over a year in this area. With this result, we could actually confirm that Las Teresitas is a critical and amazing and unique nursery area for juvenile angel sharks. And it also, um, we also started thinking um, whether there are other places in the Canary Islands that have similar conditions shallow, coastal, sheltered, and um, even artificial beaches. And we have started um, to search for more potential nursery areas. And we actually found some. And we're about to release uh, this identification and protection guidance document for juvenile angel sharks in the Canary Islands, as well as a publication that should be out hopefully very soon this year. With this, I would like to conclude with the presentation and wish you an amazing International Angel Shark Day. And I hope you can enjoy the other great presentations you will hear throughout the day. And of course, I would like to thank all our partners, um, our colleagues, collaborators, funders, um, and the local and regional governments.